Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different of a video than you guys are used to. Instead of me out hunting and stuff, we're going to get my house prepared kind of the way that I like it. That if the power goes out, it doesn't bother me. So we're installing a pitcher pump today. This is a hand crank well pump. And so this pump right here can only pull water out of the ground up to, I think it's 25 feet or something like that. Luckily here in Florida, we have shallow wells. So I'm going to show you how to take your existing well pump and tee off of it. That way we can hook this up. So that way if the power's out, I can crank water out of the ground and we're ready to rock. So here we go. Gonna give you guys a quick rundown of some of the material that we're using. Obviously, you gotta get yourself a pitcher pump. They're all pretty much the same darn thing. Everything is made in China now. I can't stand it. There might be one that's made in the US, but I couldn't find it. So then we have assorted fittings. So these pitcher pumps are already set up for an inch and a quarter on the bottom. So we just kept everything as an inch and a quarter. Then obviously back over here, I'm already inch and a quarter, so it makes it pretty easy. So all I gotta do is just cut right here. My glue that I use, I use rain or shine. This stuff is fast, it sets up really, really quick, plus the pipe can be wet. So that's why I choose to, that, to, choose to use that one. One of the most important things is the check valve. So the check valve, when I come off and tee off of here, let's just say if I left that pitcher pump open without a check valve, when my well pump tries to kick on, it's gonna try to suck from this other line that goes to the pitcher pump. So what this does is it makes it that it can only go water out the pitcher pump. It can't back feed. It's directional valve, check valve. I don't know what you guys really wanna call it. But also at the end, I'm gonna install a ball valve. One of these guys right here. So when I'm not using my pitcher pump to hand crank, I can close this. That way, God forbid, this fails or gets sand or grit or anything in it. I don't have to worry about it frying my pump because my pump's pretty expensive. Don't mind the mess underneath here. We lifted the house up in here. That's why everything is just sort of hanging all weird. You know, everything is a train wreck in here, but we'll get to that another day. So for now, I'd really, really like to have some water without electricity. So let's get cutting tool wise. You still got to build a well box like for the pitcher pump to sit on. So I'm going to start building the box first and then tool wise. So just to do some carpentry, you need basic carpentry tools and then pipe wise, that's it. You just need to cut the pipe, so a basic saw. But rain or shine, don't use anything else. Rain or shine, that's the way to go. Let's get cutting on some lumber. Okay, so I'm gonna build my box three feet tall off the ground. I feel like three feet's a decent length. I was thinking four, but then I'm like, wow, you're an idiot, Mark. Four is way too high. But yeah, three feet for the box to hold the pitcher pump. Um, don't laugh at my saw, I've had it for like 10 years. I bought it from like a homeless guy for like $10. <laughs> but she works. So, yeah, right there. Yeah, that puts it high enough. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right, let's get these cut a little shorter. But yeah, my saw, it's hilarious, but it works. It does the job. So your platform doesn't have to be perfect. I ended up just doing two foot by two foot for the base. Obviously I have to cut them to eight pieces because I got a top and a bottom. And I'm just screwing everything together with deck mates. But never have a drill that works, ever. Okay, so that is going to be my, my pump station. Cool. Figured it just kind of 
suits itself right by the Jenny. All right, now we just got to cut a piece of wood to go up on top. And then once the wood's up on top, I could drill a hole and put the pump up. Bam. I thought my saw was bad. This is Ian's. Mm. It is horrible. I mean, well, my saw is actually worse because mine doesn't work. Yeah. Bearings are shot. Alright, let me put my piece of wood on and then I'm happy. Okay. And then we'll go and then I'll finish this up later. Probably be better off. I am filming, yeah. All right. There's the top of it. So I'm screwing my base down right now. And now that the base is on and I have it in the spot that I want this thing to be, what I'm going to do afterwards is I'm going to drill it out with a hole saw to get the pitcher pump in here. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about how high we really need to set this thing. If you look at the pump, the pump being just attached to the table, it's not very high. It's not very high at all on the table. However, what are we really using it for? So it has a, bu a bucket hook. You could mount this over the side and use the bucket hook. But if I mount it over the side, then if I want to fill something smaller that doesn't have a hook, then I got to hold the damn thing. So what I choose to do is I'm going to mount it back here. I was going to lift it up, but I'm going to keep it simple. So I'm going to leave it right at this height. Then what will happen is I'm going to take a four inch PVC or even a three inch piece of PVC that can hook on here like a bucket hook. And my bucket can go down on the ground right in front of us and I can crank and it's just going to make a spout going down to the ground. That way I don't even have to lift the bucket up here, lift it down and everything. Everything is at a certain height. So it's going to make it a lot easier for us. At least that's what I think. Allison disagrees, but I'm building it. <laughs> Hoping I'll be able to grab this and loosen this darn thing. Nope, I'm not. Come on. There. Yep, it went. Okay. I haven't used this one in so long that it was too tight in there to do anything with. Come on. I can't even believe I have a hole saw. It's, it's a miracle if I have any of the correct tools to do the stuff I need to. All right, so we are going to eyeball this, which is kind of funny because I refuse to eyeball anything in my life. It looks pretty good. Let's give it a... Right there. Looks good. Okay, get that out of the way. Square, level. Cool. That was easy. And then this. Still, I need to put Teflon on this so you can see it threads in the bottom. I don't want it to get any air. So I wrap in Teflon. Some people use uh, thread seal. I don't like thread seal. I, I always like Teflon because the thread seal sometimes can get too gummy. There we go. Let's start the rest of the plumbing. The funny thing about digging over here right now is I just keep pulling up all sweet potatoes. Uh, you see, so... I'm gonna just dig this pipe down just through the mulch and then I don't really care about the rest. It's not gonna be perfect, don't care, because I'm gonna end up putting so much more mulch in here. 
that it won't matter. But I gotta try to not bust up Allison's squash and stuff real bad. Oh, holy cow! Oh, wait. Hey, honey! Look what I just found. Look at this thing. <laughs> I didn't even know that was in there. That is a bonus. All right, let's see if we can get this plant to pull back over here. I'll break it. There we go. So yeah, total random cucumber. There we go. There we go. That's out of the way now. And I just want to bury that to right here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Honey, is that you? Nope. There's all so many roots. There's really no digging right here. Good enough. Oop. Like I'm beating up the cucumber. I am. Good enough. Okay. Let's get the rest of this kind of hooked in a little bit. So I think I'm gonna put the check valve sitting upright right here. And the reason why I like the check valve being upright versus being, oh, let me grab it for you so you know what I'm talking about. So the flow goes like this. So the check valve being underneath here like this, what that does is if there's any sediment or anything, it will always fall down below versus if I put it sideways and it's one of the lowest points, eventually sediment will get in there and it'll fail. So we'll probably put that right there. All right, let's get cutting. Let's take that out. You know, one of the most important things you can do while gluing these pipe is don't spill your glue. And I say that because I've spilt my glue just about every time I've ever worked on anything. So like, if you're not gonna use it, close it. Okay. So in, and I give a little turn, and that's it. Now, so that's set. Now we gotta get a check valve and a gate valve. I'm just going to put my check right here. So we're going to go check valve is going to go right here. And then I'm going to put gate valve. Now to cut, most people are sitting there with a sawzall. I don't use a sawzall. Sawzall is for amateurs. So if I want my check valve right here, I'm going to cut it right there. And I use a skill saw, uh, not a skill saw, a uh, grinder. Um, I've got a uh, metal cutting blade on there. I don't like a metal. I prefer a diamond blade, but what I got. You see, that's a much, much cleaner cut. And I mean much cleaner. I gotta go find Teflon tape. Teflon tape. Some guys use thread seal. I don't use thread seal. I use Teflon tape. I think it's easier. Um, I use the blue one. The blue one is specifically for, you always gotta remember which end to start on. So we take it, and there's this direction that you wrap, and you wanna wrap it so that when you put the fitting on, it's not going against the grain that you just put on. Um, some stuff such as CPVC don't use Teflon tape. That stuff is so weak and so crappy that it will literally break if you try to do it. People say they don't use it so gentle. What, honey? People say they don't use it so gentle. Yeah. Okay. Let's put another end. Probably made out of rubber. What's made out of rubber? Oh. 
Probably made out of rubber. Or maybe bubble gum. Or maybe bubble gum. Gummies. Okay. That looks maybe pretty good. And I see when I ripped, it's facing that way. Now when this goes together, it's going to continue to push it on versus if I put it in the other direction, in theory, it can kind of crinkle and wrinkle it. Some people say it doesn't matter. I don't know. I just have always done it that way. I think that's it. I'm gonna a wrench on it just for giggles. You all right? What's wrong? Good enough. Okay, so check valve goes in one direction. See, it says flow. If you put it backwards, it's not going to work. So if you find yourself not understanding why it's not working, why something's not working. Oh, the other thing is too. Okay, so this is important. If you drop rain or shine down the check valve, there's a pot potential for it to not work properly. So don't drop rain or shine down the check valve. Um, the other reason why I don't use that pipe dope stuff, the one that, uh, what do they call it, thread seal or pipe dope or whatever they want to call it, I don't use it also because it has a taste to it versus this stuff I've used before. And when water touches, it doesn't make it taste funny. Now, let's just say we put this whole thing together and it leaks for some reason. I could still unscrew this whole top end. tight now all right so now the moment of truth don't drop the sealant down there so just be real careful not to make a mess use enough to make it stick but not enough that it ends up running down all over the place some of you plumbers are probably watching this and gonna nag me like oh he's not using cleaner he's not using this he's not using that well this is my video guys I don't use it. I've not had an issue. So now we need to cut it again and put my ball valve. I think I'm going to put my ball valve up higher. I'm going to stand up and kind of see how I feel about it. Let's see. I kind of like it right, right there. Right? That looks good to me. All right, let's, uh, let's see. Yeah. Made a mess. Because I got a 10 foot piece of pipe sticking at the top. Where'd the ball valve go? I lost it. Okay, same thing. If you get all kinds of stuff inside this thing, it's not going to work well either. Or like a bug. Like bug. A bug. It's a uh, pipe seal, honey. It's uh, it's glue. Glue, glue, glue. Let's see how I want this. Righty tidy, lefty loose. Yep. So. Yeah, so, so it doesn't matter if they all go the same way. So I do it with the ball valve closed. That way, in case there's something on it, I'm hoping that it's just gonna kind of wrinkle it and take it off. You know, and I'm just gonna cut a stub right now. Rather than dealing with this big long stick going up here this whole time, I'm just gonna make a small stub. You see how much cleaner that cut is too? Versus 
with a damn sawzall. I don't know why people even use a sawzall for half the stuff that they do. Same thing, guys. Do not, do not, do not fill this darn thing with glue right now. You will hate your life. I don't even know what you're yapping about over there, child. Why do people dive here at water for actually 10 weeks? Okay. That's set. So now we've got our stub coming up. And now it's just a matter of cutting it to a certain length for this. Which also is Teflon. Sweating like a pig. I can't play in the sand, honey. I'm building a well pump right now, honey. You want to get in the water? In the water, in the pool? I put shock in the pool today. So we can't jump in the pool today. What means shock? Shock means is cleaning right now. No, from the hose. What about from the hose? Oh, ha! Last piece. in there. I don't think I can inside this, but I'll try. You know, the one thing that you guys are probably wondering is why am I using certain tools? Well, the right tool is not near me. So the wrong tool is near me, but I could still use the wrong tool to do the right job. So that's why I'm doing this. That's why you have a lot of tools. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. That's not touching. That's pretty darn sealed. Honestly, our water is so sedimented. If there was even a leak, it would patch itself with sediment pretty quick. So, now, just, we look at this. And we could just look at how high this needs to be cut, which is pretty much. Same thing, don't drop a ton of glue down this. Ta-da! Let's screw it down, and that's ready to rock. See if I can get my camera stick in. All right, where's my screws? Well, here's the drill. Get this screwed down quick. And that's just a matter of connecting it at the well side now. What's wrong, honey? Is what clogged? No. It did. Be o'clock was earlier. 
Okay, so we're inside the well house now. I want to show you guys something, a very important trick. So this jalopy mess is just how it happened to be set up for a little while. Yes, I could shorten things up and everything. I just haven't had a chance. So if you see my stem right here, I'm going to try to move the camera back. So if you see, this is my stem. This is my actual well casing that goes down. And I have an inch and a quarter line go in. So when I go to cut this right now, to put this T in, if I drop this pipe, in theory, it could just go through and fall down to the bottom of the well. I don't know if it could or couldn't. So I never take a chance. So I leave what's called a, let me adjust this, a fern co-coupler. This thing, it's just a piece of rubber fitting. And what I do is, let's just say I'm gonna work on it right here. I'm gonna tighten this thing right here, below my cut. So if I cut right here right now, this can't fall. It won't go through and fall to the bottom of the well. It's kind of like a backup. If you guys don't have a fern co, like I leave it there because I always work on this. But if you don't, just take a bunch of duct tape and wrap it around this so there's no chance of you screwing up and dropping it down the well. Yes, Lillian. Okay, I need a couple minutes. Tell mom that I need maybe... I need like 10 minutes. Dinner's ready though. Yeah, have mom come out and I'll talk to her. So, like I said, I'm going to cut this right here right now. T off. 90 down, which goes to my pipe that's all the way over here. The one that's not buried, and I don't care if it's not buried, so it goes all the way to over there with my check valve and my ball valve. Like I said before, the check valve makes it so it can't suck air back if this main pump kicks on. The ball valve is like guaranteed, if I'm not using it, shut it off. That way there's no chance of ever running my well dry over here. But yeah, I'm gonna get cutting this and hopefully I'll get that done quick because it is dinner time. By the way, self-filming is a pain in the butt. Okay, so I'm gonna cut my tea in. I turn the power off on the well pump. I shut my valves and everything. So I'm gonna cut it with my antique sawzall rather than my grinder because it's so close to this other stupid pipe that I don't want to take any chances. Um, yeah. Oh, T. I want a T in right. Yeah, right there's fine. This is part of the reason. Now, do you see what happened right there? Look at that. I cut it, and look what happened to that well. That thing fell. Had I not paid attention to remember to tighten that thing, that could have been really, really bad on me. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to flick some water out, clean up that Sawzall mess, and then I'm going to dry it. Even though I'm using rain or shine, I don't want to have a ton of water in it. Oh, I can actually cut the stub, too, right now. Let me do the stub. That way I'm just kind of done. I don't have to worry about stubbing afterwards. Come on, Mark. Get your stuff out. There we go. So I'll let that sit for a second. Let's cut a stub. So my T is going to come out. We're just going to cut a little stub off of here. Nothing exciting. So that's the stub for my T. It's gonna come off like that. So we can glue that in. And I can glue my 90. I can glue a bunch of stuff before I even get to that. That way I don't even have to deal with all the dang water. Let's, uh, I think I'll do the 90 last. Let's try this a little bit. Try to scoop out the pieces of PVC. Okay, do I have enough room? Yeah, I do. So I'm gonna get this prepared for glue for both of them. So I'm gonna do top and bottom at the same time. That way I can still get that good spin. And 
and uh, the rain or shine it's pretty quick as long as you're not in like super high pressure like stuff so I'm not too worried about turning it on like say 15 minutes afterwards see that that looks good okay spinning a little bit but it should have kicked by now all right now we need a little stub to come off my collar like this drop that 90 in now in let's get this over so this is my pipe right here let's get this over where it needs to be I'll just cut another stub I just eyeball it and then I trim it if I need to afterwards the easiest way to eyeball it So I'm going to cut it on the C of Charlotte. So boring. You know the real cool thing about doing this? You get high as a kite on this stuff. I think the only thing that smells better than the blue rain or shine is the purple one. I think it's a, a cleaner or something. It smells awesome. All right, let's see how we're doing here. I think I got it pretty darn exact. I think we can get my 90 in and I should have enough room to to reach and get it all in. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get it so that way this comes down and then I'm going to shove the two pipe together, I think. No, probably better off lifting up. Sometimes getting it together is one of the harder parts. It'll be alright. Okay, now, do the poor man's tape measure if I can in here. So between these two, I can cut it at the one, at the number one. I just got a bunch of crap in my eyes. Okay, and then this one we gotta lift up and pull two. Come on. There it went. That's it. Huh. 
All right, we're gonna let that sit for a little bit. And then uh, from there, I can open up all the valves and everything again. And then uh, we could test our pump out. See, it's not that hard. It's actually pretty easy when you do it. And everything's tight. Yeah, I'm gonna open up all the valves over here. I'm gonna have a little snack and then we'll test this pump out. Okay, so we're gonna open up our valves slowly because I've got gravity feed. So it might hurt, purge a bunch of air. Well, that's not good. That's not good at all. Okay, so there's one thing that I totally forgot, and I'm going to show you how and why this is dumb, and I totally forgot, and I'm an idiot. I normally don't make myself look that stupid, but... So, right now, if I open up this valve, I just realized, look, I don't have an artesian well, so it's just pouring out of the front of this thing, and I'm like, what the hell did I forget? So I put my check valve right here, but I didn't think about it. I don't have a damn check valve on the original well right here so what's happening is is all of the pressure from the well pump and everything is able to back feed to my other line so i'm short another check valve i totally totally forgot to get the second one um i just automatically it's not even forgot to get the second one i assumed that there was one on here and there's not so i mean i could change it if i put a a, a ball valve on it but then if i wanted to use this I'd have to turn off this over there, so it just doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna to run to town real quick and get another check valve. Okay, since I'm an idiot and totally forgot to put the check valve in, yeah, you saw that whole thing, so check valve is in. Like I said, I assumed that there was one in there, but the thing is, is there was no check valve because there's a foot valve, and I'm not teeing off. So that's why it kind of makes me stupid. So let's test this pump out. Let's uh, let's take you right there. That looks pretty good. So I can open my gate valve. Ha! So because the gate valve is open now and there's a check valve, now my well pressure is not trying to back feed through this. Probably don't have to prime it, but I'm gonna show you how to prime it anyway. So normally priming, you would take some water and you would dump it through the top. That would kind of help fill this whole thing up. And then now, ready? Yeah! We have water without electric. Just gotta clean it out. It's got all kinds of, look how fast. Yeah, I got all kinds of crap going in and out of there. Yeah, all the dirt and everything. Look at that. Wow, that is quick. Let's show you. Look at this. That's faster than our garden hose. I gotta go get Allison. How's the water smell? Plasticky. It smells very plasticky with that new PVC. It'll take some time to go away. God, I like that. So power goes out. We now have water. <laughs> so, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe to us. That uh, I'm going to try to put out some more awesome videos like this. Do a little more instructional stuff for this end of the world that we're living in. But uh, also some hunting and everything. And follow us on social media. Facebook, Instagram. I hate Instagram because I'm old. But uh, Facebook, we're pretty darn active on. Oh, before I go any further. So, when I'm done with this, just in case, I'm going to reach down here and shut off that valve. Yes, we have check valves so it can't back feed this way and stuff like that. I don't trust them. All it took, like you see, there was a little tiny bit of dirt and stuff in there. With that little bit of dirt, that's it. That's all it takes to get that check valve stuck and I don't want to run a chance of burning up my well pump. So, thanks for watching, guys.